Tar sands are probably one of the biggest industrial projects in the history of mankind. The tar sands are the largest, most destructive environmental project on the planet right now. It's oil extraction. It's uh, some of the dirtiest oil on the planet, which means that it takes the most energy to extract. And the reason that we're uh, extracting this particular brand of dirty, dirty oil is because there's no other oil left to extract. Tar sands really aren't oil. Effectively, the process by which you mine and refine tar sands is effectively adding about 100 million years of development through a synthetic process. The tar sand deposit in an area that covers the size of the state of New York or larger than England is already considered the largest industrial project in human history and it's barely begun. They extracted from the sand by steaming and heating water and basically boiling it. So the oil sits on top of the on top of the water like a froth and then they scrape it off and that's the bitumen. There's mining processes and in situ processes. And both of them are pretty much trying to extract bitumen out of the sand. To produce one barrel of oil, you have to first, after you've cleared off the ground and broken all the trees down and so forth, then dig a pit which can be up to 200 feet deep. For each barrel of oil, there's four barrels of water used in a process called a slurry where you spin it at a high speed, high velocity, with high temperatures of water to separate the bitumen, which is the pre-synthetic oil, from the sands itself and all of the clays and silt. But that's after you've already dug out what has to be hundreds of tons of earth. The energy that's required to actually do that is um, approximately, um, people say for almost every barrel of oil you need about a half a barrel of energy just to produce this. So for every barrel of energy input is two barrels of um, oil that are produced. Whereas with conventional crude it was very, very minor in terms of the um, energy that's inputted to actually get the crude oil out. So the ratio that's most important to talk about is a ratio you could use in a country like Iraq, where for each barrel of oil you use to try to get more oil, you'll get about a hundred barrels back. The Athabasca River, which runs through northern Alberta, where you have like many different native communities living along the river, is being sucked of its water to fuel the tar sands operations. Because of the contamination of the river uh, from, from oil sands, discharges of things like um, oil and grease and treated sewage into the Athabasca River. And sometimes there's accidents of spills of these toxic chemicals directly into the Athabasca Rivers. The community of Fort Chippewan, both the Mikisu Cree and the Dene uh, Chippewan First Nation who have been fighting and really at the front of like raising the alarm about what's happening and their community has been, been seeing um, all this rise in, in rare cancers, autoimmune diseases, um, arsenic in, in the land, the moose meat, the fish are high levels of heavy metals, mercuries. Basically the whole environment up there is contaminated. How this is affecting my community is that it's killing off the people of Fort Chippewan. It's what I've called before a slow industrial genocide. Um, I buried my auntie, I buried my uncle, I got an auntie living with it. And this is a war for our lives because the government is allowing the people of Fort Chip to die. The tar sands are not only fueling the destruction of the second fastest rate of deforestation in the world outside of the Amazon River Basin, they are already the second fastest contributor to climate change in North America, and with the goals of production that they're talking about, the CO2 emissions will make it so the only way you could outstrip a climate change contributor for all of North America would be to combine all of the coal-fired power plants from Alberta to Arizona and in between across all of North America. 
I think that the tar sands is the absurdity of still desiring oil when we know so well that, for example, fresh water is just an elemental part of human existence and that we're running full force towards extracting these last little bits of oil to sustain this plastic culture, this plastic civilization, to the destruction of the environment in which we can live.